youth homelessness is often invisible. Human trafficking is often invisible but it is happening everywhere in every community. When I was 15, I first became homeless. Uh, my mom moved my brother and I clear across the country. Uh, the recession was about to hit and there was tensions that sort of like ran high at home. And I experienced uh, bouts of home, episodes of homelessness um, throughout my junior year entering into senior year. So um, if you think back to high school, prime college application time. I became homeless when I was 16, right before my senior year of high school when the police removed me from my parents' home, but it was determined that I was too old for foster care, so I was kind of in that gray area where they were like, you're out, and good luck with your life. I felt like, realistically, my only viable option for survival was sort of just leaving the home and um, taking a break from that toxic environment. Um, and I began to split my time between friends' houses, uh, couches, and you know, abandoned houses, because I just had nowhere else to go. I stopped showing up to school. I um, skipped classes. I didn't have access to homework. Um, spent a few nights in my car. Um, slept at friends' houses, you know, just saying it was a sleepover. Um, that was kind of my, my circumstance. One of the best investments legislators can make at all levels of government and how we can help modern day slavery in the United States is to invest in policies and practices that get homeless youth off the streets off of couches and give them the tools and housing that they need to become successful adults. I want to throw out a challenge to all of you. The challenge is to become leaders in not only being aware of trafficking, but really advocating and implementing for solutions that prevent human trafficking before it starts. They have to survive on the streets and that, th that really puts them at great risk for exploitation. So we hear stories from the young people who are in this survival mode uh, about this new boyfriend that they're living with. And then we hear about the trafficking aspect, that this young person is asked to prostitute themselves in order to pay for a place to stay. So we know it happens, we see it often, uh, and we're trying to intervene. And some of our challenges is with our LGB um, T community in terms of that those are the youth that a lot of times we're seeing on the street that are really being tossed out. If we don't invest at this level then we are really delegating or relegating these young people to the possibility of chronic homelessness in their adult days. I just want you to know that we have not experienced any increase in funding for the entire time I've been there which was since 19 87, and I think they received the same amount in the 70s. We're asking each of you here today to go back to your communities and become champions for state and local legislation that will make these kinds of, of successes uh, the norm and not the exception. Today I'm employed uh, by Youth Care in Seattle as an on-call youth counselor, which is pretty sweet. I get to sort of go back and uh, serve the same population that I was a part of, and you know, we talk a lot about of a we talk a lot about empowerment and this kind of work, and I feel like that's really, I mean, that's, that's it, it's great. <laughs> Didn't even think of taking the SATs or ACTs at the time until uh, one of my, the teacher that I was living with paid for them, um, connected me, paid for my college applications, all of this stuff, um, and I was actually accepted into Georgetown University, which was my dream school. I'm a little bit introverted for the kind of gig where I'm speaking in front of people, <laughs> and when people ask me why I still do it, it's because I think that there are a lot of questions, and I think it's very inappropriate for me to be upset that people don't understand if I don't take this seat and I don't do my part in helping people to understand. Homeless young folks definitely need like safe places to go and youth appropriate living situations. Folks are like, oh, well, I, I'm not getting into your shelter tonight, so I'm just going to go sleep outside. I'm just going to go down to the, you know, like Denny Bridge and go crash there. And it's like, well, you could go to UGM. They're open. They're like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Because, yeah, adult shelters are scary places. Uh, you know, we have the mental health and the chemical dependence, and we have all of the trauma, too. But, I mean, looking in adult shelters, you also have folks who have faced that for years and years and years, and that's kind of compounded. I think it's really important to have both emergency housing and transitional housing for young people who aren't able to go back, who aren't having that situation where maybe a little bit of family counseling would help.
These radiant, resourceful, and talented young people need practical support that will help them become self-sustaining adults and programs that um, highlight the skill sets that, um, you know, like, they already have. I know you guys do incredible events and incredible work within your communities. Bring you to the table because they really do know how to address this problem head on. I think I'd like to challenge y'all to um, not buy into the stigma that comes with homelessness. Don't have a lot of really good role models. Uh, no opportunity to sort of develop healthy coping skills or methods, you know, when things get difficult. And they're surviving the best way that they know how. What I would hate for you to assume that your city or your county or your state doesn't have homeless youth or doesn't have trafficking in your community just because you can't see it. People who are formerly homeless, um, we bring that hustle and that empathy to our everyday lives. Like Silas and Jesse are shining examples. They're giving back to their communities and they're making a difference, right? In my professional role and being the first in my family to graduate from college, I brought that with me. And all I needed was that place to crash or that place to live for four months, right? Um, so I hope that you'll believe in youth and believe that their strengths out outweigh anything. Um, and we'll, we, can, we can fight homelessness in that way.